I want to start off by first sending apologies on behalf of Speaker of the House. He's been called into an emergency, so you're kind of stuck with me for the afternoon. My sympathies to you all. Okay. And I'll do my best to represent um, my father, Jerry Lynn Simons, who couldn't be here sitting with you today. Transforming the beautiful game, the Clyde Best story. So we're here today to celebrate the, the formation of this beautiful film that's about to be worked on, produced, thought through, researched by an amazing international film team who've partnered with an amazing Bermudian team. And I just want to say thank you for coming forward and working on this project. So Dan, I just want to give you a big shout out, just if you can stand and everyone can see who you are. This is Dan, well done. And we're gonna have some of the team come forward in a bit. But to start off, I'd like to invite our special guest today. We have the Premier, the Honorable David Burt. We have the first Vice President, Shannon Burgess, representing the BFA. We have Somerset Cricket Club President, Vashon Blanchett. We also have uh, Minister of Youth, Culture and Sport, Mr. Ernest Peets. And again, I do send apologies for Speaker of the House who's not here. Um, we want to thank all of the team, Mr. Best football team, Somerset old, um, old Boys for being here today, as well as the younger group that are here. And for those St. George's uh, players that have come so far to be here today with us Somerset people, we welcome you as well. Without further delay, I'd like to introduce our Premier, the Honorable David Burt, JPMP. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Selassie, and good afternoon, everyone. I uh, certainly would like to uh, recognize and establish protocol, certainly to welcome the government Senate leader and uh, Minister of Youth, Culture, and Sport, the Honorable Ernest Peets. There is the Honorable Minister of Health, uh, the Honorable Kim Wilson. Uh, we have MP Jamal Simmons here as well, Senator Owen Darrell. Uh, certainly the BFA First Vice President, Shannon Burgess, President of the Somerset Cricket Club of Mr. Vachon Blanchett, and certainly Mr. Dan Egan, Director, Producer. And I should also recognize a former Speaker of the House who's here, um, who is not necessarily in approval of the colors of which I'm wearing today, but that's all right. And certainly welcome to members of the media. It is a pleasure and an honor to be here today as we celebrate the launch of Transforming the Beautiful Game, the Clyde Best Story. As we celebrate the incredible life and accomplishments of Bermuda's own Clyde Bess. The story of Clyde Bess is a story of strength, courage, bringing about change, and making history. This son of Bermuda's soil bravely left the confines and comfort of his island home to take his place in history as one of the first black players in top flight English football. You will recognize the color of my tie, West Ham United. And following that was also a pioneer of football in the United States. His strength to overcome the adversity he faced and in doing what few before him had done had been a source of inspiration for the generations of black athletes that have since followed, not just in Bermuda, but around the world. Clyde Best's presence on the football field here in Bermuda, then in England, then in the United States, certainly helped to break down racial barriers and instill confidence in the people of the African diaspora that they too had a place on the football field and in professional sport. And after his historic career, like a true son of the soil, he returned to help develop and build a platform through football here in Bermuda, sharing his knowledge and his skill with our, with our local athletes. And it's no surprise that we are here at the Clyde Best Center of Excellence at the home of football here in Bermuda. Bermuda is proud to be a part of this great legacy and the government of Bermuda is proud to support works like this documentary that recognize and document and record for future generations the outstanding accomplishments of Bermudians like Clyde Best. 
So I would like to say it is a pleasure and an honor to be here supporting this work. The governor of Muta is supporting this as our history is important. Far too often we do not make sure that we record history at a point in time when it should be recorded. And with the work that's been done today, through the efforts of the Speaker of the House, through the local production team of Dr. Dana Selassie, and certainly Mr. Dan Egan, we look forward to the beginning of this project and certainly the production of the film that's worthy of the man of which it is recognizing. So to you, sir, it is a pleasure to welcome you here today to be a part of this kicking off the honor. And to everyone here today, it is a day of celebration. And I'm happy that the Governor Muta can play a part. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Premier. Uh, before I call up our next guest, I do want to say a big, big, big thank you to the Bermuda Football Association. Um, they, without hesitation, came on board. They allowed us to be here today. Um, nothing went without, you know, there was no stress, there was no drama, there was no problems. They were just amazing. So we want to say thank you to their entire team and our sound person over there, Mr. Troy Lewis, shout out to you as well. Well done. Thank you very much. And to everyone from the BFA. And I am going to call up right now the first vice president of the BFA, Mr. Shannon Burgess. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I see that uh, the premier was tasked with a job. Um, and he, he was in charge of the weather. Um, uh, a little while ago, I thought we were going to have some old time Upton Park rest town, middle of February rather, but um, the, sun, the sun is shining. It's, it is my task today to officially welcome you, um, welcome those in attendance and those who are otherwise listening in to the Clyde Best Center of Excellence. Uh, it is a truly an honor to be a part of this experience and in your presence uh, on behalf of the executive affiliates members and friends of the Bermuda Football Association. Unfortunately, President Reid could not be with us today. He is traveling, as is the General Secretary, um, but they are sending their regards. Um, I know that we have been tasked to give a few, few, few words, but I, I, I would like to start with perhaps what we see as um, the legacy of Clyde Bass um, and how he succeeded not only in advancing Bermuda on the international scene, but also acted as a trailblazer for many aspiring young athletes and footballers across, across the globe. Mr. Bass's legacy will no doubt highlight his selflessness in giving back to his community, his hard work, and his unwavering determination. I often travel uh, to the UK, and I often have conversations with colleagues and others in, in social settings. Um, and when folk find out that I'm from Bermuda, um, I'm often asked the question, do I know Clyde Best? Um, and, and my answer is actually, he was the coach and manager of the national team during a stint um, a, as a national player. Um, so yes, I do, I do know Clyde Best. Um, there's one memory that sticks out in mind. I was in a black cab um, and the, the driver asked, you know, you know where, where are you from? Um, when I said Bermuda, he lit up um, and asked the question, do you, do you know Clyde Bass? I gave him the standard answer. Um, and this gentleman proceeded with glee to talk about his experience as a youngster, traveling to Upton Park, watching West Ham play, um, to the extent where he actually, one of his favorite trinkets as a kid, was a pillowcase with the picture of, of Clyde Bass. Um, and what was profound for me, to me, was that this gentleman, and, and, and I'll say it, was of a lighter complexion as mine. Um, and so growing up in those days, if you think of the racial tensions, um, that this young boy from Bermuda um, has given youngsters in a cross section of a community such as the UK um, joy and hope about playing the game of football, um, to me says that you are really absolutely most worthy of this recognition, Mr. Bess. <clears throat> so to, to me, your legacy uh, will be a constant reminder 
uh, of the true value and impact that you have had on sport uh, and athletes in general, um, but more specifically to footballers in, in our community. Uh, the importance of this film that is about to be launched is, is wide ranging um, because it is extremely important for our community, for our footballers, both young and old, to understand Mr. Best's accomplishments and his successes and his hardships. Um, and so the full story uh, could, could, can be told. The complex in which we stand, the Clyde Best Center of Excellence, is the home of Bermuda football. And it is our aim to continue to push forward the principles that Clyde Best represents. Teamwork, respect for the game, dedication and commitment, and that's just to name a few. Uh, on May 3rd, 2013, uh, we commenced with the construction of this, this complex. The BFA administration moved in and commenced operations on June 1st, 2015. And on April 21st, 2017, the complex was officially inaugurated and named the Clyde Best Center of Excellence. And I can think of no one who is more deserving of that honor. Mr. Bess, congratulations on the behalf of the BFA. Thank you, First Vice President Shannon Burgess. Now, before I call up the next person, I just want to say um, I'm here in the capacity as a filmmaker, um, as a support person for the production team, but I'm also a Somerset girl. Yeah? Somerset! Okay. I played for Somerset. My sister played for Somerset. My brothers played for Somerset. My dad played for Somerset. So we have Somerset blood running through us. No apology. So it is my greatest honor to bring forward the president of the Somerset Cricket Club, Mr. Vashon Blanchett. Somerset! Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, young Trojans. Uh, with protocol established, I'd just like to share a few words on behalf of the officers and members of Somerset Cricket Club. Um, Firstly, I'd like to thank the overseas production team, Dan and Julie, the uh, On Island production persons, Dr. Selassie, uh, and all stakeholders involved in putting this all together. Um, it is truly a story that deserves to be told, and once it is told, it can never be banished from history, and that's very important. Um, to Mr. Bess, what a great man. I mean, on a personal level, you know, you've done great things for me. You've been a mentor for me over the years, but beyond that, you have been a, a mentor and icon for many across the point. I recall when I must have been about 13, 14, you took me over to the UK, and as an Arsenal fan, my childhood hero was Ian Wright, and Ian Wright wore number eight, so I wore number eight. That season, coincidentally, Ian Wright was at West Ham, and when he saw Mr. Bass, he freaked out and told Mr. Bass that he was number eight because Clyde Bass wore number eight. So it, it's funny, I mean, I, I wasn't not even half as good as Ian Wright or Clyde Bass, but it's funny how essentially I wore number eight because of Clyde Bass, indirectly. Um, and I will never forget that when you took me over. And, and it's just so, I'm just so grateful to be here on behalf of the club because beyond what you do on the pitch, you know, you continue to offer yourself with such humility off the pitch. I mean, all these young men in front of you can attest to you just showing up at training unannounced and you know asking if you can have a word with them and not just talking about football but talking about life and the importance of education and paying attention you know things that are going to carry you forth as you grow into young adults so eternally grateful for that and I know beyond some is that you share that island wide so um, you know just a just a great man and What's most striking for me is, is the humility of Mr. Bass. Yeah, there are no airs or graces, just a gentle giant. Um, you know, he doesn't impose himself on people or situations, and he probably has, you know, grants to if, if he wanted to, um, but just such humility. So I would like to thank you on behalf of the club, um, on behalf of Bermuda, what you've done for, for not only Somerset and the country, 
but what you've done for the global game of football. Um, if, if, you know, depending on the generation of, of those gathered here today, maybe you're a June Barnes fan or the younger ones might be Raheem Sterling, but they essentially walk in, in the pathway and footstones set forth by Mr. Bass, a boy from Little Will, Bermuda. And, and when you think of the fact that he went over to the UK in the late 60s and, and what he had to endure as a teenager, it, it's, it's breathtaking. Um, you know, if you look at what maybe some of the teenagers here are into, and, and I don't say that to discredit him, but like what he was doing was really, really unreal and mind boggling. Um, but he done it and he set a pathway for, for many others that are now sort of enjoying the successes and fruits of what he had to go through to, to put those things in position. So thanks again, everyone. Um, some of it are proud of you. We're, 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 you know, we're very, very blessed to have you, but, but not only you're a jam to some of it, you're a jam to Bermuda and the world. So thank you and take care, everyone. Thank you, Mr. President. Without further delay, I would like to call up our guest of honor today, Mr. Clyde Bess. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure to see all of you here today to honor me. I am really proud and privileged What is so, you know, good for me is to ask you guys to come. And not one person said no, they're not going to come. Everybody said yes. And you guys, hey, I love you all. Thank, thank you for being in my life and me being in yours. I will never forget first uh, getting into the national team. Gary Darrell was my first roommate. And he was an idol of mine as well. I used to look up to Gary. Being a young fellow in the national team, believe it or not, I was 15, 16. Gary was about 19, 20. And the friendship and feeling the guys gave me as a young person being in the national team with a bunch of men is something that I would never forget. And I'm gonna tell you all, as far as I'm concerned, me coming from Bermuda and going to England and making it is because of all you guys. And you have been fantastic role models. I can look at you now. I remember Bernard and Skinny when we were young boys in Somerset. Bernard would always take us to Sand Secondary School to play football. And that's how we learned. Randy Horton in school at um, West End, he helped us and made sure we were disciplined and done the right thing. Vic Ball, David Frost, Mal Lewis, Pinks, Alfie, all of you. Um, hey, I can't really you know, not say enough about you all because as I've said, if everybody was to have had the tutelage that I've had from you guys, hey, they will be in my position as well. And you guys, you got to understand how much you all mean to me. And thank you from the bottom of my heart. And I'll never forget none of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Best. Transforming the beautiful game, the Clyde Best story. Today we are gathered here because this is going to be a phenomenal, inspirational, and a piece of history that we're gonna leave behind celebrating Mr. Clyde Best. I'd like to bring to the front right now, Mr. Dan Egan, the film producer and director of the film, The Clyde Best Story. Hi everybody, what an honor it is to be here and what a 
great reason to be here. One of the things I love about football, soccer, is the generational pull of the sport. And the generational pull you can see right here before our eyes. Um, and the importance of how we pass it on to others and how these guys will do the same. And when I think of the Clyde Best story, I think of the simplicity of football. The kicking of the ball, the passing of the ball, the work of the teammates. And when I think about Clyde Best as a teenager going over to England and how he overcame, I think about the simplicity of a young man that followed the instructions given to him by his parents. Be nice to people. Be nice to people. And when you break that down, the simplicity of the game and how beautiful it is when young men follow their parents' advice, and you add to that the noble character of Bermuda, and that was the ingredient that made Clyde Best overcome all of the things that he overcame. That the Bermudian culture, the Bermudian way, the generosity, the, the empathy uh, is amazing. And Clyde's comments on the press, in the press release, if you can't win, don't lose. That says patience. That says perseverance. And all of that makes for a great soccer team, great athletics, and a great life. And to me, that's why this film is so important. My connection to the Best family goes all the way back to a small school in Maine, Bridgeton Academy, where I attended and played soccer with Jerry Best. And Jerry Best was, is Clyde's nephew, and he was the best soccer player I had ever seen. And uh, Jerry said a very simple thing on day one, Egan, your job is to pass me the ball, my job is to score. <laughs> and I thought that was brilliant, so that's what I did. I passed the ball to Jerry, and he scored a boatload of goals. And we won a lot of games. And uh, every time I came back to the island of Bermuda, uh, I would keep in touch with Jerry. And my time here with the America's Cup, I got to really spend a lot of time with Clyde. And the, his book had just come out. And so we would sit and talk about that and the, the potential of a film. Uh, Julie, Julie Anderson, the producer of the movie, is an amazing uh, film producer. Academy Award nominated producer, a uh, personal friend of mine, and has done a lot of race relations stories over the years. She couldn't be here today and she sends her apologies because her new film on Louis Armstrong, they're screening it today and she got called into the screening in New York. But Julie brings a lot of expertise and a really interesting perspective, I believe, to what we are doing. Um, and what we're doing is telling a beautiful story that transcends multiple cultures uh, here in Bermuda, the UK, and of course Clyde's time in the US. So those are, that, that, that is the realm in which we're gonna distribute the film, in which we're gonna promote the film. Um, and when, every time I have meetings with Tampa Bay Rowdies, the Portland Timbers, uh, and of course West Ham, there's so much support for the film. Uh, I'm overwhelmed by seeing the support here today. I'm extremely uh, grateful for the government of Bermuda. Uh, and of course, I have to say that uh, both Speaker Lister is Bridgeton Academy 1976, and Minister Pete is Bridgeton Academy 1988. So those are some amazing connections that come together to make this all possible. So uh, I look forward to the journey. I can't wait to see the film come all the way through fruition. And I just want to thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. I'd like to call up the Minister of Youth, Culture, and Sport, the Honor Honorable Ernest Peets, JP MP, for our final remarks. Good afternoon to you all. Protocol having already been established, I certainly want to thank and extend a very special welcome to our honoree today, Mr. Clyde Bess, MBE. Mr. Bess, you are considered to be one of the greatest footballers Bermuda has ever produced. 
And today, of course, we're joined with our premier, the BFA, and all of our dignitaries and invitees to acknowledge your achievements as relates to this particular production transforming the beautiful game, the Clyde Best Story. So on behalf of the Ministry of Youth, Culture and Sport, I'm delighted that this project is being supported by the Bermuda government as it relates to a grant to assist in its creation. But today, Mr. Best, we want to pause and recognize some of your milestones. And this is just a few. You're well known as a striker for the English First Division team, West Ham United, making your first team debut in August 1969. You were inducted into the Bermuda National Sports Hall of Fame in 2004. And in January 2006, Mr. Best was awarded the NBE in the New Year's Honors List for Services to Football and Community in Bermuda. I guess it goes without saying, Mr. Best, you are truly an inspiration to all of us. You were a fierce competitor on the field, and you were a fierce advocate off the field. During a turbulent time when racism was overt in the sport of football, Clyde met such adversity head on, persevering through and paving the way for black footballers in the UK. So Clyde, we are proud of you. We're proud of you for what you've accomplished. We certainly know that it wasn't easy, but that is why it is important for your story to be shared. When this project first came to my attention, the thing that I remembered most was a quote that was simple. Your story is the right story to tell, and today is the right time to tell it. Your roots are grounded here, right here in Bermuda and we're thankful for your contributions to our young people and to soccer, to this country. And even to this day, talking a little earlier before this event, it's wonderful to know that you're doing, doing everything you can to help young footballers achieve their dream. So I encourage all of Bermuda to take some time, get yourself familiar with Mr. Clyde Best's story. He is what Bermudian excellence is all about, and Mr. Best deserves to be honored and featured and highlighted as an international phenomenon. Most Saturdays, I find myself sometimes uh, on the sidelines coaching. And at the end of every youth game, I'm going to need the help of some of the young footballers here. We would always give three cheers to the other team. Isn't that correct? So I was wondering today if we could, in salute of Mr. Clyde Betts, to give him three cheers. Hip, hip. Hooray! Hip, hip. Hip, hip. Hooray. Mr. Best, we salute you today. God bless you.